Triangles come in all shapes and sizes, but did you know that there are five special triangles that have unique and interesting properties, especially useful on the AMD 1012? Well, we'll be exploring them in this video. Also check out the previous video on how to calculate the area of a triangle in six different ways. Let's get started. So equilateral triangle is a triangle with three sides equal. There are some important properties of an equilateral triangle. The one, the most important one is that the height of an equilateral triangle with sides A is square root three by two times A. So if this is A, then this, the height will be square root three by two divided by A. And this can be useful to find many things like area, perimeter, in center, circum center, whatever the problem might ask. So this is something that's definitely worth knowing. And this follows from 30, 60, 90 triangles we'll be exploring later. The area of an equilateral triangle, square root three by four times side length squared. Also another, also another formula will save you a lot of time. Pythagorean theorem. This states that a squared plus b squared equals c squared in a right triangle. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this, but there are many important Pythagorean triples that can save you a lot of time. So these Pythagorean triples, what they essentially mean is that these three sides can be, these, if a triangle has three, four, five as the length of its three sides, it will be a right triangle. That's also true for other Pythag triples like five, 12, 13. 7, 24, 25, 8, 15, 17, 9, 40, 41, 20, 21, 29. And I also covered a lot more about Pythag triples in one of my other videos, including two very cool techniques to find out and generate many Pythag triples. If all numbers in the Pythagorean triple are multiplied by a constant, the resulting numbers will still form a Pythag triple. For example, these are all Pythag triples because they're just three, four, five multiplied by a number times two times three times four times five. And this is true for any Pythag triple, not just three, four, five. So with these, sometimes we don't have to necessarily use the Pythag theorem because if we know, for example, it's a right triangle and one side is 20, one side is 29, and it, this is a right angle. We don't have to use Pythag theorem. We can just see 20, 21, 29, Pythag triple, so 21. Okay, let's take an example from the AMT 1012. Let XOY be a right angle triangle with XOY being right. So XOY is the right angle. And let M and N be the midpoints of lengths OX and OY respectively. So OX is M. The midpoint is there, and OY has a midpoint of N. We're given XN is 19, as you can see here, and MY is 22. We're asked to find what is XY. So the key thing here is realizing that we've got a bunch of right triangles. Yes. So because this is a 90 degree angle, this side is 2X, and this side is Y. So Pythag theorem. We have 2x squared plus y squared equals 19 squared, which is 361. Similarly here, we have x and 2y. And we're given that my is 22. So Pythag theorem again, x squared plus 2y squared equals 22 squared equals 484. Okay, that's cool. Now let's expand them out. We get 4x squared plus y squared is 361. We have x squared plus 4y squared is 484. Let's now, this is now a systems of equations problem. Now, if you watch my videos on that, you know that the key here is not to try and solve for x and y. The key here is to look for what you're trying to find, x, y. What is x, y? Well, x, y, well, this is another right triangle. X O Y is a right triangle. So Pythag theorem again. This time Pythag theorem gives us that X Y squared equal to 2 X squared, that's X O, 
plus oy squared, which is 2y squared. And this is xy squared. And this is just 4x squared plus 4y squared. And that is the value of xy squared. So we don't need to find x and y. Just need to find that value over there. 4x squared plus 4y squared. How do we do that with these equations? Well, if you remember from algebraic manipulation, there is symmetry here. X and Y, they're symmetric. So what do we do? We add them up. We can do that. We know how to add. 5X squared plus 5Y squared equals 361 plus 484, which is 861 minus 16, right? Because 484 is 500 minus 16. So that becomes 861 minus 16, which is just equal to 845. So 5x squared plus 5y squared is 845. But we're trying to find 4x squared plus 4y squared. What do we do? Well, we know 5x squared plus 5y squared. We're trying to find 4x squared plus 4y squared. So we can take 4 fifths of 5x squared plus 5y squared, which is 4 fifths of 845. This is equal to 169 times 4, because 845 divided by 5 is 169, and then we multiply by 4 because multiply by 4 fifths, right? But this is xy squared. We know this is 169 times 4. We're trying to find xy. So we take the square root. The square root of 169 times 4 is, well, the square root of 13 squared times 2 squared, which is just 13 times 2, 26. The answer, xy, is 26. So the key here was just seeing there's right triangle, so we apply Pythag's theorem, and then we have easy systems of equations problem. But not all right triangles are the same. There are some special ones, like 45, 45, 90, which states that the hypotenuse of a triangle is square root 2 times the side length. And the area of a 45, 45, 90 triangle is just one, it's just a product of the two equal sides square, or that times the half, so 1 half a squared where this is A. Now there are also 30, 60, 90, and these can be used in many different situations, even the ones where you least expect to find them. So always be on the lookout for 30, 60, 90. Well, what is the 30, 60, 90? It's a triangle which has 60, 90, and 30. And in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the long leg or the leg opposite the 60 degree angle is square root 3 times the short leg, the side opposite the 30 degree angle. And the hypotenuse is just going to be double the short leg. So we get these values here. The area of a 30, 60, 90 triangle is just square root 3 by 2 times the short leg squared. But you can easily derive this using our area formulas and 30, 60, 90 triangles. Now here's an interesting Amy problem. In triangle ABC, let A and B measure 60 and 45 degrees, respectively. 60, 45 degrees, respectively. The bisector of A intersects BC at T, such that AC equals 24. I'll just ignore this diagram for now. I'll draw a different one. In triangle ABC, we have A is 60, and then B is 45, so just ignore this diagram. A, B, C, C is 45, A is 60. The bisector of A intersects B, C at T, so this bisector, 30, 30, intersects at T. And we're given that A, T equals 24, right? And we're asked to find the area of the triangle. Hmm. So how should we approach this here? The thing is, we don't have any 30, 60, 90 triangles. We have a 30, 
45 and using angle chasing, sum of angles in a right tri in a triangle, this will be 105 degrees and this will be 75 degrees by supplementary angles. And similarly, that would make this 75 degrees because the sum of angles in a triangle formula. So the key thing here is to immediately realize this is an isosceles triangle. So the two opposite sides are equal. This must be 24 right there, right? But we still have a 60, 75, 45 triangle. We don't know what that is. I mean, that's not one of our special triangle types, right? What do we do from there? So let me just extend this a little bit so it's a little more clear why it's isosceles and not some something else. So it's remember, it's we always want to be look out for congruent angles at the base because it turns out that that's it'll always give you whenever you have isosceles triangles, you can always translate from angle to size or from size to angles. And those two properties, you have to always be on the lookout for them and be ready to use them, even when it's part of a much larger picture, like here. So we have this is 24 as well. So the thing here is now we have a 60, 75, 45 triangle, and we're asked to find the area. So what I'm actually going to do is we've already had the 24 information encoded now as part of the side length. So we're actually, it turns out we don't need this line anymore. Now we just have a triangle right here. 60, 75, 45, where AB equals 14. Or 24. So now, how do we deal with the 60, 75, 45 triangle? The, the thing is, we, this looks a lot like 60, 45, I mean, we know 45, 45, 90 triangles. We know 30, 60, 90 triangles as well. This looks an awful lot like those triangles. So this, there's actually a very cool trick we can use here. We're going to drop an altitude right here. And what, what happens when we drop this altitude? Well, now that's the right angle. So now, because the whole angle is 75, remember 75, 75 is the whole angle here. This entire angle is 75, but we can split it up into two parts. And this right part over here will be 45 because 45, 45, 90, the sum of angles in a triangle has to be 180 degrees. So we know AB is 24. So what does that mean for this, this angle over here? This, just this part here on the, on the top. Well, that will be 75 minus 45, which is 30. Isn't that cool? Now we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle plus a 45, 45, 90 triangle as well. So now let's use that information. Well, the, we, we know that AB equals 24. So let's solve using the 30, 60, 90 ratios. 24 is the hypotenuse, and the short leg is half of the hypotenuse in the 30, 60, 90. So 12. And the long leg is root 3 times the short leg. 12 root 3. And now we use the 45, 45, 90 properties. So 45, 45, 90 have that these two sides equal. So 12 root 3 and 12 root 3. But the question asks us for the area of ABC. Aha! We know the height and we know the base. So we can use half AB formula. So half times base, half times the base, which is 12 plus 12 root 3, times the height, which is 12 root 3. And now we just simplify this out. That's 12 root 3, somehow got deleted. 6 plus 6 root 3 times 12 root 3. You can rewrite this as 72 root 3 plus 6 root 3 times 12 root 3, which is 216. And now look what the question asks for. The question right there, it asks for if it can be expressed in the form a plus b root c. Find a plus b plus c. So we just do 72 plus 3 plus 216 equal to 75 plus 216, which is 215 plus 75 plus 1, 291. And so 291 is the answer to this cool problem here. And now this is another type of special triangle. This is 
the 13, 14, 15 triangle. So if the th three sides of a triangle are 13, 14, 15, the, it can be divided into two right triangles with integer side lengths. So we drop an altitude to the side that has a length of 14 right there. And if we drop this altitude, if we use the Pythag triples or Pythag theorem, we get that this distance will be five from here to here. And we'll get that this distance will be nine from here to here. Because 5, 12, 13, 5, 12, 13 is a Pythag triple. And 9, 12, 15 is also a Pythag triple. So, and the sum of the two sides is, well, exactly 14. So that's a cool property of how we break it into two right triangles. And you can easily find the area to be half times 14 times 12 equals 84. And that's also something that's good to know. 13, 14, 15 is powerful, and you can get many free, you can get this free book in the link description with a bunch of practice problems here to test your knowledge. But next, we're going to move on to similar triangles. So I actually had a hard time finding problems for the previous chapter because literally every geometry problem uses similar triangles, the most important concept in geometry. And there's has very useful properties for solving problems like these ones here. Sometimes similar triangles are part of a larger picture. It's not just a simple triangle. And we'll be looking at how to solve complex geometry problems using similar triangles in this video right there.